Hello, I'm Eric from Gun Gamers. Welcome to another video. And today we're going to finally answer the question which AK mid caps should you buy? Before we begin, let's talk about how we tested 18 different mid caps in a variety of airsoft AKs. We picked up as many different models of mid caps as we could from some of the most popular brands. For some brands, we picked more than one model of magazine to see if they're consistent in feeding and fitment with all the different guns that we had on hand. We're using them in five different Airsoft AKs. Some are stock and others have aftermarket parts, but in general, they should be pretty representative of how they'll fit in stock examples of the guns because we haven't done any significant modifications to the mag wells, unless mentioned otherwise during the video. The brands are Sima, LCT, E&L, the Crytac TR-47, G&G, &G, and Maple Armories, which is OEM'd by DITAC in terms of the body. We did this to see if testing was consistent among the different brands and to make this video helpful for as many players as possible. Our first test was to see if the mags held their advertised capacity, and most brands did pretty well. Of course, with this, there's going to be somewhat of a margin of error based on the amount of force we can use to load magazines, but every brand was within a certain percentage of what they're marked as, and some even held more BBs. We did have one magazine from Blue Box break during this stage, and we ultimately didn't move it on in our testing for the feeding aspect. So uh, we just came to our undisclosed filming location to uh, test out the magazines and this blue box mid cap that we had just finished the capacity test of, it was unloaded in our bag that we had the, uh, that we had the magazines in. You can see the followers sitting like that. But uh, when you actually do a little anything, that follower comes right out. We hit the range and tested for fitment and feeding in semi and fully automatic with all of our guns. Uh, nearly three hours of shooting and thousands of BBs later, we had all of our data and headed home to see the results. With all the testing done, let's go over the results and see how the different magazines stacked up with some of the different guns. Uh, I'm going to actually go by gun first because I know that a lot of people watching this are probably going to have all types of different airsoft guns and they're wondering what works with their gun. If you have your Sima AK, uh, honestly, most of the magazines were pretty good. Uh, I would say the clear winner with the Sima is probably, honestly, the Sima mags. I mean, those are, generally speaking, pretty close to their stated capacity. A little bit of wiggle room in there sometimes, but they fit and they feed with your Sima gun. Uh, but for that matter, so did the ENL, and actually, so did the LCT mags. So. Overall, Sima actually has pretty good luck with most of the AK mags on the market in terms of compatibility of the ones that we were testing. Uh, the ones that definitely do not work well with the Sima are going to have to be the blue box mags, and that's just because uh, this follower was broken uh, and it had a good amount of wobble, which could potentially cause issues. Uh, the other magazine that did not work with the Sima and for that matter, I'm just going to single this magazine out. It didn't work with anything. Was this G and G polymer AK mag? Uh, this polymer AK mag just worked with nothing. We think it's a proprietary spec for a series of guns that G and G made. Uh, it's probably on us for even including it in this test. But you know what? It was on there. It was listed as an AK mid cap. We bought it, and it worked with nothing. Not even the G and G that we had in the test. <laughs> Now, if you have an LCT, uh, again, shocker, the magazines from the manufacturer worked pretty well with that manufacturer. LCT actually, again, had pretty good luck with most of the magazines in this test. The wobbliest mag we probably had was the Tokyo Marui mag number 16 that we just spent like five minutes hunting down. But this magazine, uh, I think LCT makes their magwell a bit larger than the Marui spec standard, and that's probably why overall the LCT actually had the widest compatibility with all of the magazines that we included in this test. For some reason, uh, I remember going into this test thinking that it was pickier with mags, and then after testing all of these mags currently on the market, I'm just like, oh, I guess it's better than I thought. e and L. Uh, again, worth mentioning that this is an older ENL. That's a Gen 2 from back in like 2015, 2016. With the uh, with the newer ENL specs, might be slightly different. But actually, the ENL um, 
was probably the second pickiest with mags, I would say. Uh, and that may be due to it being a modified older ENL, but it really did have several magazines that would not go into it and would feed maybe if you held them just right. Uh, but ENL, little bit picky. Uh, so we have as our full results. What would we recommend with the ENL? Uh, honestly, with the ENL, you want an ENL magazine, it seems like, because the ENL magazine fits well, like it was made for it, uh, and it fed well. So. The Saima magazines uh, also did work to an extent, if I recall correctly, uh, specifically the Saima Bulgarian one, but this was the one we had the issue with where it got stuck in the front and you could tear off that, uh, you could tear off that front locking tab. That one fits pretty much perfectly. And feeds pretty much perfectly. But, ooh, hold on, nope. Getting this magazine out, it's caught up. So, ah, yeah, that could be a potential failure point as you're bringing this magazine out of this ENL receiver. That front area was caught up, so if you're not very careful and coming straight out with it, you could probably break off that locking tab. Another thing to note is that we do have previous iterations of this Saima Bulgarian mag and others like it uh, in our inventory as a team. And we have noticed that some of the older ones do not work with this ENL, while this newer one did work. And that may be due to a new mold having been made, a new spec having been established. Uh, but if you have older Bulgarian style magazines, they may or may not work. Uh, but if you have newer ones, they might. Airsoft, amazing how nothing ever fits correctly all the time. Now for the pickiest gun of this entire test, by far, the Crytac TR-47. And this thing is my baby, and I love it, and it's ridiculous, but I love it. Uh, but it wants nothing to do with most of the magazines in this test. Uh, the Tokyo Marui magazine worked just fine, so if you have a Crytac TR-47 or something like that, you may have the best luck with something like a Tokyo Marui magazine, uh, or the Saima metal magazines, or the King Arms magazines actually fit and fed really well. But a lot of the other magazines did not fit and feed correctly. Uh, those magwells really were just made to the Marui spec, so get Marui spec magazines. Uh, that thing is a total airsoft ridiculous gun. Six of them ever existed in the real world as far as we know. So uh, just use the 47 mags as was intended. So next up we have the Maple AK's compatibility and with the Maple AK compatibility, uh, a lot of the mags worked better than we remembered, uh, but some of them still didn't work. I would say the winner with the Maple was probably the Sima Metal mags just because I know that those work and I've used them with that gun before. Uh, so I can personally vouch for continued use of those. Another one I wanna highlight is the King Arms magazine actually with the Maple. Uh, I know these used to be a lot more common, uh, but they're pretty cheap. And that's the nice part. If you're looking for affordable mags, the King Arms might be something to consider. They were tight in the Maple. Uh, they were definitely very tight, but they didn't wobble and they fed great. Uh, so if you're looking for budget mags, then you know, those King Arms mags might be an option. Uh, the Saima mags are also not horrifically expensive. I believe these are the Bulgarians that did fit in this gun. Uh, yeah, these were a little wobbly, but they did fit and feed. Uh, so I would probably go with the steel mags over the Bulgarian style. But if you're looking for a Maple AK, Saima mags, King Arms mags, again, seems pretty Marui spec. And if you have a G&G &G AK, uh, the magazines you're probably going to have the best luck with for your G&G &G AK are probably going to be G&G &G magazines. But that style G&G magazine. Yeah, yeah, thing. correct. Yeah. But when we say G&G &G magazines, we mean this style G&G &G magazine, not this style G&G &G magazine. Uh, get the flat top G&G &G magazine, not the squared off, weird, flared top G&G &G magazine. Get the right G&G &G magazine. Uh, with G&G, &G, it seems like their spacer in the magwell with the rubber can create a lot of downward pressure on a lot of magazines, and it can push them out of engagement with the hop-up. Uh, and we've also observed in older G&G &G AKs, sometimes that 
rubber plate needs modification in order to accept other manufacturers' magazines or even G&G magazines. Uh, so when you're using your gun and trying to figure out, oh, what mags are going in this, uh, sometimes you have to look at the gun itself as well. Those mag well spacers can make it very tight to get other magazines in or any magazines in. And if that's causing you to have problems of breaking locking lip, uh, locking tabs or you know, fumbling reloads in general, then maybe that bears modification. Based on our testing uh, and everything that we did, we've kind of collaborated and come to what we think are the three magazines that in our sample size of one in this test on this day overall did the best. And I would say that this comes down to ENL, the Sima Steel Magazines, and actually the Sima Waffle Magazine, which despite being an older magazine than every other magazine on this table, did really well. Uh, the Blue Box Magazine did fit in a lot of stuff, but the follower kind of broke on us, so we couldn't test that much with it. Although weirdly enough, it still actually fed with the broken follower, so I don't know. We'll have to, uh, we'll have to do some more with this thing and see what happens. But if you're looking for AK mags that fit in a lot of things, honestly, these new production ENL mags seem like it. Uh, I remember having an ENL back in the day. The magazines from ENL were not very good, to be honest. Uh, but these new ones seem to be better, at least this one that we have on the table. Uh, then the Sima magazines, man. Honestly, they just fit in a lot of stuff. Their capacity can be a little bit iffy, which is probably a matter of, you know, quality control differences between Sima and some other more premium brands. Uh, but you're getting 140 to 150 BBs of capacity. You're kind of within a margin of error, although we were loading these magazines pretty hard, so I, I'm willing to bet they're not gonna get too much over that. Uh, but you're still getting a good level of capacity and a good level of compatibility with all these mags. In the ENL, we actually were able to load to 133, <laughs> So that's 13 over its stated capacity. Uh, so if that's a problem for you, I, I guess that's your thing. But uh, generally speaking, these magazines worked very well. And if you have a collection of AKs that need uh, some different, you know, specs of magazine or, you know, they're slightly off, these three seem to go into the most things. And again, if you have an SR-47 in your collection of AKs, this is probably gonna be your best bet because the ENL did not work with the SR-47, but this one did. But the overall lesson I take away from a test like this is that in many cases, uh, some of these guns are very much specced to the magazines that are made by the company. So if you have an AK and you're looking for magazines, first place to look might be at the OEM. Uh, if those you know, springs wear out and they're not very good. Uh, to be honest, we did have these LCT magazines here, which had a lot of compatibility issues with a lot of other brands. So maybe sitting on an inventory of those isn't worth it for you. Uh, so if you want the broadest compatibility, we gave you some options. But if you want the most niche specific thing that's gonna look exactly right with your gun, check the OEM first. So anyway, hopefully that's a good breakdown of this data. Hopefully you guys found it useful and informative, and we'll see you in six years when we do one for MP5s or something. <laughs> I've been Eric from Gun Gamers, and uh, thank you to the incredible team that we have here that we were able to pull this off in one day when the previous one took me two weeks. <laughs> so thank you again for watching. Peace. <laughs> <laughs>